I honestly believe that 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 we're on the dawn of a new age of really understanding this disease in a much better way than we ever have before. You know, the forebearers thought that the cancer was simply uh, a proliferation of cells uh, that were all kind of the same, and they were growing in a particular place uh, that didn't completely respond to therapy and kill people. And if you could just understand how that cell was, and you could grow it in a dish, you could grow it in an animal, whatever it was, it was all kind of the same. But we know now that things are very different than that, that the tumor cells are actually quite heterogeneous in these tumors and that these individual variations in cell type of the tumor uh, have very different responses to therapy, for example. And we know that the cells that are, that are resistant to therapy live in certain places in the tumor, and that they talk to the, not the other tumor cells as much as, as in fact, the stroma, the, the normal structures in the brain or whatever organ it's in, uh, and get a lot of their instruction about how to behave from the adjacent normal stroma. And then the, the very complicated uh, analysis of thousands of genes simultaneously uh, couldn't, wasn't even dreamed of back then. So it was like, it's like trying to imagine the Internet before there ever was an Internet. I mean, I, you, you couldn't even imagine it. It was beyond, you know, your vision. So a lot of what we're dealing with right now is simply beyond the, even the vision of the people 20 years ago. They didn't even know what questions to ask. When you sit around the table at Thanksgiving with friends and loved ones, what do they ask you? Well, they ask me why we haven't cured cancer yet. What do you say? And I, and I try to explain how complicated it is. And I say, going to the moon is easy. This is hard. <laughs>